his proposal was that we take F-22 fighter jets, we paint the Chinese flag on those fighter jets, then we fly them into Russian territory, bomb it, bring them back to the United States, be like, oh my God, Russia, China just bombed you. Then Russia's gonna be like, oh my God, China just bombed me. And then they have to go to war with China or they have to be distracted with China. And in that mess, they will have no choice but to leave Ukraine alone. Let's talk about this truth that Trump put out. We call it a truth, right? Again, we were talking about this earlier, but Trump runs this, well, he doesn't run it, but he owns the social media platform, like Truth Social, it's his social media platform. Uh, that's why he calls it Truth Social because everything is the truth there or whatever. I don't know why they call it Truth Social. But um, he didn't tweet this out because it's not on Twitter. So is it a truth? I talk about this every time we talk about this website. Is it a truth? I, I'm going to say he truthed. Okay. So Donald Trump put out a truth. He truthed. And he said, in reference to the tanks that are being sent to Ukraine that I'm very supportive of. I'm very happy it's being sent over. I think it's really going to help the Ukrainians defend their land and hopefully help them uh, liberate large swaths of their territory from the occupiers. But he has a different view on it. He says, first come the tanks, then come the nukes. Get this crazy war ended now. So easy to do. And then Jack Prasobic responds to this by saying, breaking, President Trump slams a less el escalation in Ukraine, calls for war to end. No other world leader is calling for this. Okay, so... How, how do I, okay, how do I put this lightly? Okay, the first, the first thing I want to say is I don't want to hear from all the same people who are going to look at me and say, climate change, oh, please, you're, you're just talking about an imaginary doomsday. What do you mean? Stop, stop selling us your, 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 your swindling con man ideology of green fascism, but then also is going to turn around and say, if we give Ukraine one more bullet, the world's going to explode, which is what this comes off as, right? The idea that us sending Ukraine tanks is going to, it means either A, we're going to have to send Ukraine nukes, which is ridiculous as long as Ukraine's not in NATO, the idea that we're going to give them nukes, or even if they're in NATO and that we would necessarily give them nukes. This is something that's like not really, really being entertained seriously right now. It isn't. It's not really on the table. Ukraine is not asking for the United States to give them nuclear weapons. Uh, they're not asking the UK to do it. They're not asking France to do it. They're not asking Israel to do it. They're not asking India, Pakistan, North Korea, and certainly not Russia, uh, the UK. They're not asking any of these the, the countries that actually have these weapons to do this. So... There, there's no reason for us to believe that just because we give them nukes, we give them tanks, that we're going to have to give them nukes, okay? But that's like the first interpretation of this truth, message is truth. The other interpretation is he says, we give them tanks, then we all die, right? That's the other interpretation, which honestly is even sillier than the first interpretation. We have given Ukraine air defense systems, Patriots, Patriot air defense. We have given them M777 howitzers. We have given them HIMARS, which have decimated Russian logistics. We have given them tank parts through Morocco and other countries. A bunch of Western uh, European countries have already sent tanks. Uh, a, lot of, a ton of Eastern Euro European countries like Poland have already sent tanks, like T-72s. Uh, Morocco has sent tanks. Um, the UK announced like a few weeks ago before we announced or Germany announced anything that they were going to send tanks. We have sent tons of guns, tons of ammunition, tons of financial aid, humanitarian aid. And we're not the only ones. All these other European countries have done the same. Even Morocco has sent tanks, an African country. And there has been no real risk through any of that of the world exploding or of Russia using nukes. The only thing that makes anyone entertain this is because the Russians continue to say uh, at, at, through government officials that, hey, if, uh, if Russia's national sovereignty is under threat, we reserve the right to use nuclear weapons. Very vague, nothing explicit. And it wouldn't make much, much sense for them to make a vague threat about nukes and then launch a nuke because 
the main benefit people get from nuclear weapons is nobody wants to invade you. And there isn't really a real risk here, Russia being invaded. They're invading another country, you know, and the the threatening and you being able to use it as a threat against others. But actually using a nuclear weapon hasn't really happened since 1945, since the end of World War Two. There's a nuclear taboo. And if they were to use tactical strategic, you know, not strategic, but tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine, which would be the most likely scenario if they were to do it, we're already talking about extremely unlikely scenario. They would use it as a weapon of terror, so they'd be able to kill civilians, damage infrastructure, try to instill terror, but that wouldn't get them much of anything else. But what were the repercussions they would get? They would have a ton of repercussions, whether it comes in the, in the form of sanctions, more military aid to Ukraine, more humanitarian aid to Ukraine, possibly getting the Chinese and the Indians to agree to a price cap on Russian energy exports. There's a million negatives to them using one of these weapons. It doesn't make any sense for them to use it if it comes with no benefit. And that's why the Russians have always been vague about it because they're trying to get as much as they can out of the threat out of like the terrorist threat of using these weapons while not actually doing it because they because if they were it would absolutely backfire and that assumes that the russian generals and the people who would be given this order by putin would actually follow out on his order if he was to do this which that's not a given definitely since the chinese due to leaks have been revealed were trying to convince russian generals not to follow that order if that order is given mitzelin thank you so much for the tier two sub just giving myself a sub i appreciate that thank you for joining my board of directors or as i like to call uh my financial uh victims anyway it doesn't make much sense for them to use it. And so I have no reason to believe, and nobody with any expertise or is taking the situation seriously, genuinely believes that now we send Ukraine tanks, and so now Russia is going to blow up the world. The world's going to go explodey time. This is the type of stuff you would hear from, like, the whack job on a street corner who's, like, somewhat, like, like kind of tweaking out, you know? Uh, he has, like, a cardboard s sign with, like, some feces smeared on it because, again, he's mes mentally deficient. And then he's like, the world's going to explode. The world's going to blow. Russia's going to blow it up. And, the, and then the, the end is near. The end is near. But when he says it, because he was president, and he is a politician. We're supposed to take it seriously. But let me just say, let's let's move on to the second part. So easy to do. He said it would be so easy to do to end this war now. Now, I, I, I want to say that something I've noticed of all the people who are like, end the war now, stop sending all the weapons. And of course, everybody wants to end the war now. But the problem is, if we were to force the Ukrainians to end the war now, that would mean giving up large swaths of territory to be filled up with mass graves, as we have already uncovered through the liberation of Izium, Bucha, and a bunch of, a bunch of other locations. Some of these mass graves I've seen in person. Not a pretty sight. The, I, I, I have no reason to believe that the Russians would give us a fair shake or the Ukrainians a fair shake if we were to force the Ukrainians to come to the negotiating table now. And it is up to the Ukrainians whether they want to continue the struggle, in my opinion, since they're the ones who are bearing the repercussions, the most severe repercussions of this war continuing. But over 80% of Ukrainians are unwilling to make any territorial concessions in a peace agreement. Any. That includes Crimea. And so you expect them to agree to a peace agreement, which the Russians are putting forward now, which would mean... Crimea, Esto uh, Crimea, Lat uh, let's say Latvia and Estonia, Crimea, Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporozhia is in their hands. And they say that's the base level for them to even enter negotiations. The Ukrainians have to accept that that's all them, theirs, if they want to enter negotiations. That's ridiculous. Not only that, but they also need to accept demilitarization as well, meaning literally setting themselves up to be invaded again down the line, but next time they just wouldn't have enough weapons to defend themselves. So when that's the Russian starting position and the Ukrainian starting position is leave our country, please uh, get out. It's kind of hard to negotiate that. Definitely since the Ukrainians are still willing to fight, they have pushed back 50% of the territorial gains the Russians have made since February 24th, and they want to keep going. And the Russians, they don't want to agree to this because, well, Putin has really kind of bet a lot of his political ambitions and career on this, as well as the Russian establishment, and they don't want to have to turn to their people like we had to do after Vietnam and say, guess that was for nothing. 
And, you know, countries have had to do this before. The Portuguese had to do it with Angola. The French had to do it with, with uh, Vietnam. We had to do it with Vietnam. The Soviet Union had to do that with Afghanistan. And to an extent, we had to do that with Afghanistan, to an extent. Even if the government tries to kind of like pitch it like, well, we, you know, we we made, we signed a deal where Al Qaeda will no longer operate in, in, in Afghanistan, even though we, we know they are. So this is something that like countries who invade other countries and fail, like naturally have to go through. But instead, the Russians want to make the big boom threat vaguely because they don't want to, they'll never commit on it. And that's why there has not been a change in America's nuclear readiness level is because we know that they're just, you know, kind of beating their chest. It's the same reason why the why the United States government is now more and more convinced that we're we're kind of okay with the Ukrainians doing strikes on Crimea. And people are really scared when they heard that. I saw Michael Tracy was like, oh my God, another escalation. Even though the Ukrainians have already blown up the Kerch Bridge, they've already targeted air bases in Crimea, what then nothing happened. Outside of the usual Russian terror campaign in the air, nothing happened. So when when Trump says so easy to do, why does he never say that and then propose his peace deal? Same with Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, or anyone who says, oh, we need to force negotiations right now. My, my response will always be, what is your proposal? Because my conclusion is that right now it is impossible. Uh, unless you want the Ukrainians to literally give up everything they have while they're winning. And I want you, I want you to walk up to Ukrainians and I want you to say it like this. Hey. I know right now you've taken back over 50% of your land that they've captured since February 24th. I know right now you've got them on the back foot and this is the best chance you're, you're probably ever going to have at victory. Maybe you win, maybe you lose, who knows? I know you are willing to continue this fight with the vast majority of your people still wanting to continue the struggle of liberation against this imperialist invasion, invasion against this war of colonialism, but you can't. I don't care how many victories you win. I don't care how well you're performing as you exceed all expectations because I don't want the world to go boom. If you take back the land that the Russians didn't even have until eight years ago, the world's gonna explode. So give up. Do you know how, like, that's ridiculous. That they're gonna look at you like you're a fool. And to be quite frankly, and to be quite frank with you, you kind of sound like a fool. And so I would like to hear Donald J. Trump or any of these people who say it's so easy to make peace, do it. Because Trump hasn't been able to negotiate any peace deals in his time. You wanna know the one thing he did negotiate? The withdrawal from Afghanistan. And I got to be honest, even though it is an accomplishment for us to be out of Afghanistan, the withdrawal from Afghanistan did not go exactly swimmingly. And I think um, it had it had many things to be desired uh, if, if we could redo that withdrawal or we drew, re, redo the negotiations that led up to the withdrawal. The one proposal I saw Trump gave and I saw people when I brought this up on Twitter coping, saying it was a joke. I listened to him. It didn't come off like a joke. And he wasn't saying it like a joke. This is Trump. This is how he thinks. This is how he thinks about world affairs. This was his proposal on how to beat the Russians in this war. He, he made this proposal about 10 months ago. His proposal was that we take F-22 fighter jets. We paint the Chinese flag on those fighter jets. Then we fly them into Russian territory, bomb it, bring them back to the United States, be like, oh my God, Russia, China just bombed you. Then Russia's gonna be like, oh my God, China just bombed me. And then they have to go to war with China or they have to be distracted with China. And in that mess, they will have no choice but to leave Ukraine alone. I'm not joking. I am not kidding. And neither was he. That was one of his proposals earlier on in this war and how to deal with it. Now, to some people, 
You know, that that's ridiculous. You know, that's silly. And I'm to everyone, it's ridiculous and silly. The only people who I saw trying to defend it were saying, oh, he was joking, he was joking. He was not joking. He was not joking. If anybody got a link, they can link it. We'll watch it on stream. We'll listen to him say it. And we'll listen how he was making an actual serious proposal on what he wanted to do of his smart, unique, brand new ideas on how to deal with world affairs. Trump is a buffoon when it comes to the world stage. He has a child's view of world affairs when he met the president of north of northern uh in northern iraq we're talking about like the krg region the kurdish region in iraq he just called him mr kurd when he was visiting estonia latvia and lithuania he started asking their leadership about like hey i'm i'm happy you you kind of survived that civil war and they were confused he was talking about the yugoslav civil war which happened in the balkans not the baltics he got the balkans confused with the Baltics. This is always how he's operated on world affairs because he doesn't know that much about the, you know, the issues he's talking about. And so what happens with Trump is he'll either grab the steering wheel and start going crazy like a baboon, which is what happens when he actually gets his hand on something in, in relation to foreign affairs, or he'll, he'll pass the torch over to Rex Tillerson, John Bolton, or somebody else, right? Maybe Michael Flynn very early on before he was removed for being a dirty criminal. And so this is something that, I mean, I just want to bring into perspective when we hear these people say, oh, Trump wouldn't have gotten us in this mess. No, you're right. It probably would have been worse. It probably would have been worse if his proposal is just bomb the Russians as he's calling the Democrats and people like me who support Ukraine war hawks and crazed maniacs who's gonna watch the world explode. Donald Trump was saying fire and fury in relation to North Korea, but all of a sudden, and he was making genuine proposals behind closed doors on how we could use nuclear weapons. Like we have them, why can't we use them type scenario. He was legitimately asking those questions. And now he's pointed at other people who are sending military aid to Ukraine that has very, very basically zero chance of, of ending with a retaliate, uh, uh, nuclear rea uh, retaliation. And he's saying, oh my God, the world's gonna explode. He's, be he's becoming a doomsday profiteer. After many people thought he would be the person who brings doomsday just due to his general ignorance. Anyway, man, that's enough of that. I just wanted to talk about this because a lot of people are saying, man, man, Donald Trump's very base. Let me be clear. Donald Trump's opinion on something changes depending on who was the last person to talk to him or just whatever his feelings are at the time. If, if we were able to get Trump in office, it might be true that he drops support for Ukraine, or it could be that he does the exact opposite and says, how about we bomb Russia? Trump is off kilter. He, he kind of just goes with the wind and just kind you know, does whatever his feelings like push him towards or whatever the last person in the room whispers into his ear. Easy to manipulate, but also like he'll, he'll flip on a dime, which makes it more difficult. Like easy to manipulate in the moment, hard to manipulate in the long term. So just wanted to bring this up because, you know, Donald Trump, he's running in 2024. If the war is still going on then, and he somehow wins, please mother of God, anyone else. Um, if he somehow wins, then we're going to have to deal with this guy when it comes to this war. And it's really just going to be dependent upon whether there's going to be somebody whispering in his ear who's not a brainlet. He was friends with Putin. They would never have had a war. No, no, there would have still been a war.